Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Gabriel with another fan TV. Back at another video. Like the content of this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Like the content of this channel, go ahead and hit subscribe, man. Ravens Daily. Uh, we're still doing it uh, Sunday morning. So what I want to talk about today is the Ravens just finished their first full week of training camp. So 10 days in total. So I want to talk about takeaways from week one. You know, what the reporters been saying, you know, what can we take away from stuff like that that's going on with the Baltimore Ravens, right? Um, so I'm kind of going to, going to go by position by position, and we're going to do it like that, all right? So quarterback, um, Lamar Jackson is set up for a monster season, in my opinion. Every report is that he's the sharpest he's ever been. He's throwing the ball better than he's ever been, and that it's coming out with more zip, more velocity. And in the training camp videos, you can see it. Honestly, you really can. This guy, and it really should be a surprise to, to anybody because this guy, Lamar Jackson, every offseason, he has something that he wants to work on. He comes back, and he's approved in that area. Last year, I thought he was throwing the ball as best as i ever seen him throw it. So if he's throwing the ball better than he did last year, the Ravens are in for a really good season. And um, he's going to be, in my opinion, in the MVP race, all right? Running backs, running backs. So it looks like J.K. Dobbins is a guy – that is close to coming back. Out of all the guys on the pup list, it seems like J.K. is the closest to coming back just to due to his eagerness to get back out there. And uh, I think the Ravens coach staff is noticing that and want to get him out there on the field. Now, with that being said, they shouldn't rush him, you know, just to appease his interest of getting on the field. But it's good to see J.K. has that itch and wants to get out there. Now, as far as other guys, um, honestly, I thought a guy like Corey Clement was just a training camp body. But he could prove to be much more. Now, I... I've heard people say, well, what about Justice Hill, right? So Justice Hill, I think, is a, you know, he plays special teams well, all that. That's great. But for him to make this Ravens team, I think he has to contribute and add running back value. And he's been doing that somewhat in um, the first week. So if he can get, continue that and actually get on the field as a running back, I wouldn't mind keeping Justice Hill on the team. So, you know, he's progressing. He's playing all right, okay? Now, wide receiver. Wide receiver is the most talked about the beta, uh group on the Baltimore Ravens. People think we need three people, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So you get a whole variance of opinions when it comes to the uh, the Ravens wide receiver core. What I would say is this. Rashad Bateman looks like a wide receiver one. Lamar Jackson is targeting him early and often, kind of like how he did with uh, Marquise Brown. So the targets that Marquise Brown dropped, not 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 literally dropped, I'm saying dropped by like, um, you know, switching teams, obviously. Um, Rashad Bateman will pick up. He will pick up that slack and... Honestly, I like it a little bit better from Bateman just because he doesn't have the same speed as Hollywood, but he can get deep. He can work short. He can work intermediate. And I think when the Raiders need a big play on a third down, they just don't have to look for Mark Andrews anymore. They can look for Rashad Bateman. Now, outside of that, right, James Prochet is taking the next step. And, you know, that, that was actually a, a title of an article for, uh, I think, a Ravens article. And it's the truth, man. He's making plays every day. There are fans that will look at James Prochet and say, Oh, he does not. He's not that big. He's not that fast. Da, da, da. He gets open. And even if he's not open, he has great hands that makes the catch. So I don't really understand the fans. Come like There are certain fans that complain about James Prochet. And I, I really honestly, I don't understand it. He works hard. He he when he gets the opportunity to play, he catches the football. Um, And, he you know, he, he's a comfortable, reliable receiver. And I think we'll get that from James Prochet this year. Um, you know, Duvernay missed a lot of time with the injury, but he was he was playing better. I think I expect him to play a lot of wide receiver this year and actually do a play play that role pretty well. Um now wide receiver five or four, however you want to view it, is honestly wide open. Tylen Wallace has been up and down. The Ravens need Tylen Wallace to step up. He was drafted in the fourth round, yes, but he was a second round talent before he towards ACL, and he needs to put that on the field and show that preseason games are going to be big for him. Now, wide receiver five, uh Jalen Moore is showing out uh every report he's doing something um now that he's, he's having lamar jackson throwing the ball means he's running some not running with the ones entirely but you know he's getting that work with lamar too so it's like the ravens are noticing Jalen moore benjamin victor big target i think he's like six four uh long lanky can go get the ball uh i really like benjamin victor uh, i i I don't know if he makes the team necessarily, but I think he is a good receiver, good wide receiver. Um, UDFA free agents. Uh, that means Shamar Bridges, Slade Bolden. These are two guys who are making plays, making their presence felt as well. Um, that, that position group, 
I, I think the Ravens have a lot of talent at the position. It's just a lot of unproven talent. So it makes people nervous. And I understand that. And I get that. There are no names on there besides the Sean Bateman that, you, that you're going to look at and be like, oh, OK, yeah, I know that guy. Right. That doesn't mean they're bad players. That just means that they need an opportunity to put it on the field and show it. OK, so tight ends. Um, Mark Andrews, throughout camp, still can't be guarded. It's not a surprise. He's the best tight end in the NFL, if you ask me. So he probably shouldn't be stopped by anybody on the Ravens right now because he won't be stopped by virtually anybody in the NFL. So, uh, But who I really want to talk about is obviously, I say it all the time, my favorite rookie, Isaiah Likely. Isaiah Likely is a big, fast target, a unique tight end at 6'4", 240. Um, he's put in place together every day. And he's showing the Ravens that you need to play me, honestly. The Ravens do this thing where they, sometimes they bring offensive talent, especially rookie offensive talent, along slowly. Get Isaiah Likely on the field. I, I don't want to see him ball on slowly, this and that. Get him on the field. He needs to play. He deserves to play. Um, just because he revived something for the Ravens. A big target, a mismatch target that outside of Mark Andrews that can really be effective. I heard some people saying use him as an H-back role. So, like, say you sub Pat Ricard for certain things and he can – he could do that motion flat route, motion whatever kind of thing that Pat Ricard does. I like the idea. I like him playing as a big slot. Um, I don't. I know people say, "Oh, he could be a wide receiver." Well, yes, he could be a wide receiver technically. I really don't want to see him matched up outside against the team's one or two corner, uh, second cornerback. So I'd rather keep him either in line, big slot, or that H back kind of role out the backfield. So Greg Roman needs to be creative and find a role for Isaiah Likely on this team. Please. Okay, so uh, offensive line. Offensive line has been solid. I think the biggest thing I take from the offensive line is they're deeper this year than they were last year, and that's an obvious statement. Last year they were depleted. The whole team was depleted, but the offensive line was really bad, no depth. If anybody went down, um, it was a big problem. So left tackle, obviously we're waiting on Ronnie Stanley to come back, but in the meantime, Jawan James was brought in last year just, for, just in case for this scenario that he had to, if he had to play left tackle, he could do it. You know, Pat McCarry is a is a great six offensive lineman. You know, um, Morgan Moses, veteran presence, doesn't miss games, consistent, solid player. Uh, who else? So I look at a guy like uh, Ben Powers, right? Ben Powers is, is someone that, honestly, I thought wasn't, you know, even going to make the team. But right now, he's the starting left guard, according to the depth chart. We'll see if that holds. We'll see if that's... Uh, something that's consistent that sticks. We'll see, right? Um, Tyler Linderbaum, before his ankle injury, was playing really well. I did want to see Tyler Linderbaum get some snaps in preseason, but it looks like he's going to miss one to two weeks, so he'll definitely miss the Tennessee game. And if he misses the game after that, I don't know if anyone's even put him out there for the third preseason game. We'll see. Uh, but in practice, Linderbaum's been playing well, snapping the well, making uh, making reads, picking up blockers. Um and I know people are concerned about his size. I get that. But I don't think the Ravens are going to put Tyler Linderbaum in too many situations where he's blocking one-on-one, 300-pound, -on -one, 330 pound men. I don't think the Ravens are going to do that to him too many times. I really don't. So I like what I'm seeing with Tyler Linderbaum. I like what I'm hearing about Tyler Linderbaum. So switch to the defensive side of the ball now, right? Um, the defensive line this year could be scary. It could be really, really scary. I mean it in the best possible way. Adafi Owe has been constantly getting pressure, constantly making plays in the backfield. Um, every day is that Adafi Owe is blowing past this guy and that guy. And when I say this, I think a lot of fans get nervous when you hear stuff like that. Oh, does that mean the offensive line is bad? Not necessarily. It means that Adafi Owe is damn good. Take it as that, right? Take, take it as the positive side. Adafi Owe is really good. Uh, he's only getting better. He was raw last year. He's learning new moves, all of that kind of stuff. I love what I'm seeing with Dafi Owe, right? Um, Justin Matabike, Travis Jones, um, uh, Michael Pierce, Brent Urban, Calais Campbell, Justice Houston. These are all guys that can provide pass rush and stop the run. I didn't even mention Dalen Hayes. Dalen Hayes has had a great um, OTA mini camp period. I haven't heard as much his name as much in training camp. I'm not too worried about that. I think when it comes to, to put the pads on on the field, he'll he'll show up preseason regular season. OK, um, I was talking about Travis Jones, Travis Jones, Michael Pierce loves Travis Jones, glowingly reviews about him saying that they don't make too many guys like Travis Jones. And I, I agree with that. 
Travis Jones is, uh, he went in the third round, but really could have been a late first, early second round kind of guy. And the Ravens, I mean, in a way, kind of lucked up and got him. I'm not sure why he dropped like that. Maybe it was f being from a small school like UConn. I'm not sure. But um, in terms of football, small school, obviously. We know what they do in basketball. But uh, maybe that's the reason. But Travis Jones is a beast. I think the Ravens, the Ravens for a long time haven't been able to rush the passer without sending six, seven guys. I think that changes this year. I really do. Um, so linebacking core. Um, linebacking core. It's been solid so far the first week, and I'm going to reserve judgment on them just because it's a little thin. I want to see how the guys play in the preseason. I want to say one more thing about outside linebacker. The Ravens must sign an outside linebacker. The position is supremely thin. They need to address it, okay? With Vince Beagle going down, um, the Ravens have three. From my account, oh, Stephen Means got hurt as well. From my account, the Ravens have three reliable outside linebackers right now. Oh, jo sorry. Owe, Houston, Hayes. The Ravens must sign one or two players. Jason Pierre Paul is out there. The Ravens must make a deal for somebody. Okay, so now cornerback. Cornerback is supremely deep. You know, I'm, I'm just going to talk about the young guys. We know about the vets. We know Humphrey is putting it on the field, playing well. So, uh, Brandon Stevens' press coverage, line of scrimmage, has been one of the highlights of this training camp period for me. He's jamming guys, wide receivers, tight ends, it doesn't matter. He gets his hands on you. He's so physical. He's keeping you there. Love it. Uh, Pepe Williams caught a pick six not too long ago, okay? Um, who else? Uh, Jalen Armour Davis has been noted for sticky coverage. Not exactly catching interceptions, but breaking up passes. So the young guys are putting on the field. We know what we have in the veterans and Kyle Fuller and uh, uh, Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters when he comes back. We know what we got in those guys. The young people are putting on the field. Now, I just mentioned a guy yesterday, David Vereen. I'm, I've seen him name pop up the last two or three days. Um, undrafted uh, free agent corner from Newberry College, South Carolina. He's making plays. So the Ravens are so deep at cornerback. That's a position that if you guys are going to watch the pieces in the game, watch how the corners play. See who's allowing passes. See who's breaking up passes. See who's making plays. All right. Um, now, lastly, the free safety group, not free safety group, sorry, the safety group in general. Uh, talented, deep, and um, guys are going to get their hands on the ball. Marcus Williams was brought here to get his hands on the football, and in training camp so far this this week one, he's been doing that. He's been getting his hands on the football in multiple different ways. Uh, more about pass breakers. I haven't heard too much about interceptions, but he's still he's still in the right area and still making plays on the football. Kyle Hamilton. Now, the Ravens released a first depth chart, and Kyle Hamilton was listed as the backup free safety. I don't care about that too much. He will be on the field a lot. His versatility will be immensely important for this team. And the fact that he can play a little bit of free, strong, uh, some slot work when, when he, he has to guard a big tight end. He's been going against uh, Isaiah, Isaiah likely a lot in practice and winning some of those matchups. So his versatility is going to be a real chess piece for this team. I just hope that the Ravens don't put too much on his plate and make him confused out there. He's, he is still a rookie. I know he went to Notre Dame, so he's, he, he's smart. I get all of that. But you still want a rookie to play to their strength, especially early on to start off. So we'll see what happens with that. But throughout the first week of uh, training camp, Kyle Hamilton has been very, very impressive. All right. I know people want to talk about that one route in the stadium practice where he got beat by Bailey Gaither. I don't care. All right. When the pass came on, he's been impressive. All right. Um, and Chuck Clark's been doing the same. Chuck Clark has been a, he's been Chuck Clark, steady Eddie, solid player. I do want to mention Tony Jefferson. Tony Jefferson, um, I listened to his lounge interview, his lounge interview. This is a good listen. You got to check it out. And he mentioned that, you know, part of him getting better was catching interceptions. He said that he was catching 100, 200 balls a day, working on his hands, and that's showing up. He's catching interceptions, which wasn't Tony Jefferson's strong suit in the past. So if he can add that to his game or some other element, that's beautiful. So the Ravens week one training camp, I think the major takeaways are wide receiver position. Um, after the first three wide receivers, four, five, and beyond is wide open, right? Defensively, I would say the major takeaway is the fact that the defensive line looks really good and the Ravens will be able to rush the passer this year, I believe, without having to send six, seven people. So those are my two major takeaways from training camp so far. And, I gave my takeaways for each individual position. Hey, look, it's your boy Gabriel, just on the fan TV. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We'll be back with some more Ravens content shortly, man. You have a great day.